Welcome everybody to the petersonproject.net short film premiere. My name is Mia at Dr. Cecilia Peterson. I have everyone muted for logistics, but the energy is vivacious, I promise. We have a good chunk of our cast and crew here. Unfortunately, not everyone could make it due to time zone differences and schedule conflicts, but we got a good chunk of the crew here. And what we're going to do for this recorded little premiere fancy session is do some Q&A. And this is really an opportunity for um, you guys, my audience, to get to know the other people in the cast besides me um, and hear more about what inspires them, what they did in the film, and a little bit more about them. So the first thing we're going to do is introduce ourselves. So I will go first. So my name is Mia, pronounced Mia. It looks like Maya, but it's Mia. Um, my pronouns are she, her. I am from Chicago, Illinois, where the film was... <laughs> Uh, where the film was made and produced. And I played Sarah Atkins and also wore 9 million hats, producing, editing, directing, writing, etc. And uh, put this whole shindig together. Hi, my name is Lily. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I'm from Ontario, Canada, and I play nurse Alexandra Smith. And I'm also part of the promotion team. Hi, I'm A. Um, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I know, fancy, fun. <laughs> um, and I played Corner Young. I was our scientific consultant. And uh, with lovely Lily, I was um, a member of our PR team. And I also did the Spanish uh, subtitles. Hello, I'm Ryan Bradley. Um, I am from Redfield, Pennsylvania. I was Dr. No. <laughs> I was reporter Jackson. Um, so Salem unfortunately could not make it. Um, Salem was reporter Taylor, which was the third report in the movie. Salem is from Poland. I am Loki. Yes, that is my real name. I currently reside in the great state of Arkansas, and uh, <laughs> and I was John Davis in the morning. Hi everyone. Um, okay, so we wanted name. My name is Jillian. Um, played reporter Haley Richardson, and I'm from Los Angeles, which sounds very weird because I was born and raised in Chicago and lived there all my life until six months ago. So, <laughs> hi, I'm Kristen O'Poyne. Pronouns are she/her. I am fully born, raised, never have lived outside of Massachusetts. And I was co-writer as well as last minute voicing police commissioner McGill. <laughs> Hi, my name is Blake. Um, I go by he, him. I was born, raised, and currently reside in New York. And I played Dr. Andy. Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Michael. I, I'm, uh, I'll, oh, okay, hold on. I live in Thailand, uh, specifically in Phuket. It's a tourist place. And um, I made the newspapers and I kind of wrote the news reports. And I was the saw saw guy. I just made sure it was like accurate to saw law. Okay, fabulous. So what I have done is prepared an individualized question for each person on my team that is specific to them. Let's start with Ryan. <laughs> so tell us or tell my audience, please, more or us too, I guess, more about reporter Jackson. So I noticed you included a British accent, which I think is iconic. Um, so this spurred me to want to ask you who is he did you create a backstory for reporter jackson we all love the british accent was that a choice for a specific reason and how does reporter jackson fit into the saw lore um reporter jackson moved to america when he was around 16 17 maybe fought with logan nelson in fallujah so that's how that's a nice tie into jigsaw um and then he came back when he was uh, 23, been re news reporting for the last three years. Ryan, that was so niche and so specific. Thank so you. Favorite. That was fantastic. So, A, in addition to playing our corner, obviously, um, in the film, you were also, as you said, the science expert, scientific researcher uh, in our project. So can you tell our audience, please, uh, why? because I don't think we touched on this yet, why you specifically were kind of in this role, meaning the science researcher. Yeah. Um, if you have any thoughts on Venzaprine, and lastly, how was it being in this scene where it, with Matthew, where you and Matthew were essentially our version of like the saw twist? 
as, aside from being like having this huge passion of, of acting and theater and all that I am graduating with a BS in neuroscience in a couple months so um yeah graduation um and I have minors in biology and psychology as well and some other stuff too so that's kind of how I fell into this role because um not only have I spent four years basically studying a very intensive science I also do currently work in a neuroendocrinology research lab so I'm very well versed in reading and um exploring the literature around these topics so I was able to kind of hone in on um like first I diagnosed Sarah then I determined her cause of death preen usually like or not preen the I and E is usually added to medicines like hydroxazine um, for example, that's an antihistamine, like, you know, histamine. Um, and so my first thought when you said benzaprine me, it was like, I was like, oh my God, it um it works in the um uh, in the histaminergic systems. I think that's the adjective of histamine. I don't know. And so I needed benzaprine to basically kick off a medical event that would lead to sepsis. I love the saw twist. Uh, so I particularly loved this because I as a femme person was getting to like initiate it. Um, and that doesn't usually happen in the Saw franchise. But also because of my love for Eleanor and Logan, it was very cool that I was playing a medical character. I have a bunch of tattoos um, like on my arm. And um, I made sure that you could at least see a couple of them because um, it means a lot to me that Elle as a character is a medical personnel with so much life and so many tattoos and obvious queer coding. And so I loved, I loved every bit of it. <laughs> so Jillian, your question is very, very niche because you and I come from the same world. So I wanted to ask you because your voiceover work was so excellent. I mean, you really sounded like a seasoned pro. Did you notice any crossover between your kind of musical training that you and I both have um, and this project specifically? Yeah, a little bit. Um, because oftentimes, I'm sure you've done some of these gigs too, where you're not seen, right? Um, sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. And um, you still have to be on, right? So just because nobody's looking at your face, that relieves the pressure of, oh, am I grimacing? Am I making some weird contortion, right? Um, so that's relieving, <laughs> but then it almost heightens your other senses. I, I redid a lot of takes for sure, because I was like, oh, I don't like how this vowel sounded, or I breathe funny or I don't like this. I, I don't know, just like the placement of consonants where I could tell um, I should do this all in one breath. I found myself applying those same principles here. I end up working in a lot of um, religious contexts of different faiths and um, my groundedness in my own various spiritual beliefs is very important. And one of those for me is um, how to move about in this world where we're constantly being bombarded by information that can be really scary and really terrifying and how to stay informed and vigilant without and for lack of a better term just caving into the energetics of fear i saw her as this woman who's like seasoned in her career um and wants to underscore the importance of what's happening to her viewers but she doesn't want them to be afraid so she wants them to feel calm in having the knowledge so that if they spot something they can just go out and like find a way out as opposed to being consumed with fear and then not have that as great of an accessibility to clear mind to get out of a situation. Let's move to Lily. In addition to being our lovely nurse Smith, um, I would really like to publicly shout out Lily. Um, Lily made so much of our initial sort of PR posters, um, concept posters and and Photoshop and and the main poster that's all over the internet for this project is Lily's. Can you tell your audience more about the inspo behind that specific per poster? And the one I'm referencing is the black and white one of Sinova with like the red font. Um, if there was inspo behind it um, and, and uh, kind of why you enjoy uh, designing this kind of stuff for fun. So first of all, thank you so much. Uh, I really had a good time. When I first started on this project, when it was brand new, I had like a creative overload and I couldn't stop making posters. Like I just, I was on like a rampage and I kept making more and more. 
And that one is definitely my favorite and I'm most proud of it. And I also just want to thank you for like putting it everywhere because it means a lot that like, I don't know, I made it and it's all over the place. Um, so I designed that on Canva. I made all of them on Canva. Shout out to Canva. And I um, I wanted it to kind of be like Sonova or Cecilia is like watching. She's always kind of watching and she's kind of, you know, in the background, she's there. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there was a lot of use of blood. Like it was a very important element. It was very like a heightened moment in the film whenever her nose bled, whenever Sarah's nose bled. And I wanted to use like a deep red to like kind of focus on the fear and more like scary elements and also, you know, have a muted fit, uh, picture, but then like one bright eye catching focal point. So I made it black and white and then there was dot net in red. I don't know. I, I wanted it to be interesting to look at, but I'm really happy that it came out like that. I'm very, I'm very proud of it. So thank you so much. So Blake, please let us know what was the most challenging part of playing Dr. Andrews, because Blake really had a unique role in this story where he is sort of the catalyst of the film taking a huge turn, right? So Dr. Andrews calls Sarah halfway through the movie and he's like, listen, your cancer is not only still present, it wasn't cured by this lady in Mexico, but also it's like progressing in this manner I've never seen medically before. And I can imagine being in those shoes as an acting, as an actor was, you know, a lot. So what was that like for you, Blake? And do you feel like your expertise, because Blake runs an amazing saw page at Saw Source, go follow him. Um, do you feel like your expertise in the saw lore from your content creation has helped you in this role at all? Hi, Mia, you look lovely. I just want to add real quick. Um, Thank you, like, um, so sweet. <laughs> Dr. Andrews was really challenging, but I feel like that's a challenging thing to do in real life. And I kind of had to put myself in the shoes of doctors that like have to tell people this like every day, like, hey, the time is limited. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And like, it was very hard doing that. It was very hard reading my lines. You know, I had a couple struggles reading my lines and stuff. You know, I've never done any acting before. This is my first step in the acting. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I feel like so many characters in the Saw universe are doctors, from Dr. Lawrence Gordon to Dr. Lynn Denlin to hell, even Dr. Cecilia Peterson. A lot of the big characters are doctors, you know? And I feel like it was such an honor for me to get to play a doctor. And like, I really appreciate being a part of this movie. And I love my role and yeah, I don't really have much to say like that. It was very struggling, struggle inducing, but you know, we got there. We did it guys. <laughs> We did a team. Thank you, Blake. That's so, 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 so sweet. Thank you. So Kirsten is not only a very gifted voiceover actor um, and actor in general, but Kirsten also um, is uh, a writer and does a lot in kind of like the horror indie film scene. And she's very talented. And so um, because you act and direct and all these things and write in the horror genre and as an independent artist, um, I want to ask in terms of writing, because you played such a huge role in helping me with the script, what drew you to writing specifically, whether it was like, you know, I, since you were a kid or recently, and what catches your eye specifically in working in horror that makes something a particularly compelling or interesting script? Yeah, so I've always been a storyteller throughout my life. That was what I was naturally drawn to. I started doing like stage performances when I was three or four. Um, I aggressively read as soon as I was able to read. <laughs> I aggressively wrote as soon as I was able to write. I like self-published my first little book through I think like Bookiemon was one of those my parents helped me set it up where you could actually order a copy when I was nine. Um, so I've always been very drawn to storytelling and I think writing especially because then it was like, oh, I'm actually crafting the full story from the get-go. Uh, screenwriting initially became partially because I was interested in acting, but I was like, I'm going to write things for me to be acting. Um, <laughs> so I did that a lot when I was younger. And then as I got older, I started getting more interested in just the screenwriting itself. When people ask me what I do now or what I want to do with the rest of my life, my answer is normally horror, which sounds weird, but... <laughs> 
one of those author, screenwriter, director, acting, every creative area of my life that I'm involved in, I'm doing it in the horror genre because those are the stories I want to tell. Um, which people talk about, then you're going to get boxed in. I want to get boxed in. <laughs> my first horror film I wrote and directed in middle school, <laughs> which was a horror comedy called Slumber Party Panic. <laughs> That's precious. The thing that always drew me to horror is looking at kind of the best and worst of humanity mm -hmm. and the scripts that I felt like were the most interesting not just in horror and any stories is I feel like it really needs to have solid characters and it really needs to have solid things that are relatable and makes you think about life and I don't mean that everything needs to be like deep <laughs> like it can be a light film it can be a comedic film it can be a but it needs to have those aspects of it. And I felt that a lot with, um, I do a lot of beta reading for print works. I've done some looking through scripts and it's very much like I need to care about the characters by X amount of pages or I'm not going to care about the rest of it. So that was a big thing that I loved about Saw because the Saw franchise has both of those aspects. It's hugely character focused. It's very high high concept in terms of things to think about and petersonproject.net was a hundred percent that as well it is just focused on this couple and how they are dealing with this and i absolutely loved it for that reason writing is such a unique thing and and um uh it's just like out of everything in this project, all the hats I wore that I felt that was my weakest. And so I am just so grateful for your assistance and, and help with, with my scripts. Like truly. Thank you. Um, like I, 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 I think writing is great, but it's just, it's just like really not my strong suit. So. Um, and I am so thankful you brought me on to this project. I've had such a wonderful time and I love all of you guys. You're all amazing. This this group of people is the freaking best. I mean, I'm biased, but I don't care. It's truly one of the most <laughs> fabulous groups of people I've ever met in my entire 29 years on this planet. So in addition to Kirsten, Loki is also wears many hats and is very talented. Also does, um, besides the voiceover stuff, also does, you know, writing and other horror things, horror genre things. So Loki, in addition to your wonderful voiceover um, talents you share with us with this film, um, can you tell us anything? It can be anything about like a recent work you've done, any upcoming projects, stuff you've just released that's, you know, that maybe saw people in particular would would enjoy. What have you done as, as sort of an independent artist that you would like to sort of publicly speak about or advertise? Uh, well, I just recently concluded the second season of my TV show on Disney Plus. Uh, you might have heard of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's why my name comes up. Let's not lie. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, like Kirsten, I've been writing for longer than I'm going to say out loud on camera. Um, third grade was a long time ago. <laughs> but I have numerous anthologies that I'm in, some of them with Kirsten. We just uh, did one that was football-flavored horror, which was kind of uh, a niche thing. <laughs> Um, Kirsten's got a wonderful story in it. Mine's a little more unpleasant. I don't know if you've read it yet. Um, it's it's not my to do it. But the big thing that uh, I have going for me right now is I started doing poetry on the day my dad passed away, and I've been chasing that dream forever. And through circumstances, I had it taken away from me very dramatically. And I took it back and I put out my first collection and it's it's won awards. And I'm working right now. As a matter of fact, what I'm going to do as soon as I get off this call is get back to laying out a collection I'm doing with other poets to kind of promote the community, including uh, Kirsten and a number of other talented people, because I'm all about the community and helping the scene thrive because there's a lot of egos in entertainment so uh, it's it's all it's all about like let's let's come up together let's help each other up and that's that's the big thing that I'm about. 
Michael, I just want to firstly publicly acknowledge how brilliant your attention to detail is, because I think true Saw fans are going to pay attention to that. What about this particular lore to you makes it stand out from other horror series? Or what about the lore stands out that you like it, you know, to this much of an amazing level? Okay, so um, I don't know why, but I've always liked paying attention to like small movie details. I have no idea why, especially Saw, because Saw, they put like lots of attention to detail behind the scenes, like the dates, the you know, lore, it's always hidden in the props. So I've got like a folder on my phone filled with pictures of saw props. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I like attention to detail for some reason. But yeah. And also because I make my own stuff sometimes, like animation. So I like putting small details as well. Actually, I'm going to ask you a follow-up question because you mentioned details. Can you tell our audience a little bit the process about putting together the, <laughs> the newspaper? Just because that looked so aesthetically nice, and I know you spent quite some time on that. Yeah, I made it in um, Adobe Illustrator. Tried to base them off like real newspapers because um, I've never interacted with fun in my life. <laughs> so yeah, I tried my best to make them look a bit accurate. So now you will use one word to describe Suneva Makoti Lund. Warm. Uh, ethereal. Outstanding. A powerhouse. Industrious. Uh, graceful. Ooh, that's a good one. Talented. Perceptive. Like, she gets she gets her character yes. real well in anything that she's been in. And I would also add intelligent. She's extremely intelligent. Inspirational. Yeah. We would not have been able to do this film without Cineva. We really wouldn't have. There, no Cecilia, no Peterson Project. Thank you so much for joining us for the PetersonProject.net virtual premiere. We hope you enjoyed today's interview. Have a wonderful day.